If you dig deep enough in any form of media, even in cartoons and animated fare, you're sure to find some truly mind-blowing explanations about why certain things are the way they are. And I can't remember what the cure was. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fan theories about cartoons. Sounds fair. Thank you. For this list, we've chosen the most popular and jaw-dropping conspiracies on what you may have thought were quirky, innocent cartoon shows or animated films. I think I need help. While you might also find some creepypastas on here, which are horror-related legends, don't forget to check out our list of the top 10 creepypastas for a more in-depth look. Scooby-Doo Post-Depression Theory The Scooby-Doo Franchise Warning, this video may possibly ruin your childhood, so don't say you weren't warned. Okay, ready Patrick? One, two, three! Number 10, Flaw is Gadget, Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget <laughs> Kicking off our list is a kick right in the heart of this light-hearted cartoon about everyone's favorite robotic detective. And what good is a computer without hat gadgets? The theory in question states that Dr. Claw is actually the real, or at least the original, Inspector Gadget, who supposedly died via an explosion. It's time to throw in the sponge. His genius niece Penny then created a robotic replica out of grief. These robots are useless. Like you. This would explain why Claw pretty much always escapes from the villain's clutches unscathed. He wouldn't want to actually harm his own niece, and only wants to destroy his mechanical replacement. My plan was foolproof, but not gadget-proof. It also explains why we never actually see Dr. Claw's face. Wow, we're only at number 10, and already we're pushing into some Major League Dark territory. Chief, where are you? I'll be right there. Number nine, the Flintstones live in the future. The Flintstones. Hey, Wilma, isn't this fun? It would be if you'd stop choking me. If you thought Bedrock's favorite family was kicking it back in the Stone Age, then this theory will make you think again. Evidence for this one comes from the 1978 TV movie The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, where a malfunction with a time machine leads two of animation's most beloved families to share the screen. I think Daddy's got a new favorite now, Mom, playing horsey back. How does this support the theory? Well, the time machine was created by Elroy Jetson to bring his family into the future, that is, further in time than the future in which they already live. But what if the machine actually worked? They're out of the past, all right, some kind of crazy flying nuts. We know the Jetsons live in the sky, and perhaps they're doing that to avoid the nuclear wasteland below that's been brewing into another Stone Age. Maybe we've gone so far into the future, the time has started all over again. I wonder if they know any other words. That means the Flintstones is actually set in a post-apocalyptic future, instead of thousands of years in the past. Yikes. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times, none of this is real. Number eight, Peach Creek is purgatory, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Try to contain yourself, Eddie. The adrenaline of irreverence can be quite overwhelming. Who didn't love this show growing up? Its lovable lead characters and their zany adventures were one of the Cartoon Network's greatest productions. I was asked to mend the curtains by mother. Every child should start their day by completing the tasks set upon them by their parents. But did you ever wonder why we never saw their parents? And why Ed, Ed, and Eddie, along with all the other kids on the show, were perpetually stuck in the cul-de-sac? Well, this theory says it's because they're all stuck in purgatory. No, we are not kidding. Why do I condone such behavior? <laughs> Each character apparently died as a child at different points in time, and now remains confined to their suburban afterlife. There is no exit! For example, Rolf spends most of his time with farm animals because he died in 1903. Feast your eyes on Rhodes called Shot Wagon! Eddie is so obsessed with money and wealth because he died during the Great Depression. My money! And Ed loves comic books so much because he died right as their popularity soared, near the end of the Second World War. I'm here, blockhead! Number 7. Charlie Brown is Dying of Cancer, the Peanuts franchise. <laughs> you thought Charlie Brown was just an unlucky kid who happened to have a receding hairline? Actually, according to this theory, he's got terminal cancer. Would you like to buy a nice Christmas wreath? 
Merry Christmas anyway, sir. God bless us, everyone. Not horrifically dark enough for you? The reason he always seems so down, and that life doesn't seem to give him a break, is that his adventures and entire life are all an illusion. In other words, nothing but a dream created out of sadness for his brief existence. I just can't seem to do anything right. Each of his failures is just his own misery manifesting itself. Try to watch a Charlie Brown special now without feeling hollow inside. I think I need help. Hmm. Everything I do turns to failure. Number six, Wally doomed the Earth, Wally. Aw, isn't he just the cutest thing ever? Wally's a lovesick robot that travels the stars to be with the one he loves, and has a voice that just makes you want to pinch his metallic cheeks. E well, what you didn't know about him is that this little bastard actually doomed the planet. Didn't you wonder why the planet was covered in garbage at the beginning of the Pixar flick? That's because, according to this theory, Wally destroyed all the other robots, took what he needed from their bodies to fix himself up, kept certain items of trash to decorate his home instead of compacting them, and left the robo-corpses of his fellow brethren scattered across the wasteland that was once Earth. But hey, he's so cute, chances are you'll love him regardless. Number 5. Winnie and Friends Mental Disorders, The Winnie the Pooh Franchise He's Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Willy Nilly Silly Old Bear The classic tales of Pooh Bear and his friends are beloved by children and adults everywhere. This makes things especially lovely, considering this theory, in which the timeless characters have each been diagnosed with a psychiatric disorder. Goes like this. Pooh is impulsive with obsessive fixations. So Pooh ate and 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 ate. Piglet has general anxiety. Oh dear. Even my shadow is small. Tigger has ADHD. Why? That's what Tiggers do best. <laughs> Owl is dyslexic. Hmm, I can't imagine that he's changed that much. Rabbit has OCD. <sighs> And, not surprisingly, Eeyore is a major depressive. Somebody. Anybody. Suddenly, the tales of a teddy bear with a love for honey are sounding a wee bit bleaker. Bears of honey and I'm a poo bear. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Time for something sweet. Number four, Timmy's on antidepressants, the fairly odd parents. I don't see a smiling face. There it is! Here comes another kick to the childhood. While you may have thought that Timmy Turner was a lucky little boy with fairy godparents that could grant his every wish. Hello, Timmy. Shall we go for a ride? What you were actually seeing was a metaphor for Timmy taking antidepressants to ensure he made it through the day. We're playing dodgeball. It's dries versus wets. Think fast. <laughs> How does this make sense? Well, this theory states that this scenario is possible because the godparents only appear when Timmy's life starts to take a tumble, but they aren't around when he doesn't need them. Little Freedom Fighter, we'll get you out of here! On top of this, too much use of their magic is shown to have disastrous results on Timmy personally. Go to your room and don't come out until you learn responsibility for other people's property. But hey, at least it's better than the alternative theory that they're just being imagined by a sexually abused boy. Yeah, we're not going anywhere near that one. Wow, that didn't even hurt! Number three, Comatose Ash, the Pokemon franchise. And I hereby declare to the Pokemon of the world, I will be a Pokemon master. A lot of entries on this list involve the fantastical elements of their respective shows being nothing more than figments of the imagination. Pokeball, go! I did it! Well, this one deals with an entire world being made up in the mind of a comatose Ash Ketchum. You really saved us, Ash. No way. We did it together. One theorist makes the point that the tone of Pokemon became much lighter after Ash was struck by lightning in an earlier episode. Ever 
Ever since then, Team Rocket became much less menacing, and the 10-year-old can somehow traverse freely in the world without consequence. What is that? A Pokeball? <laughs> the fact that there are multiple Nurse Joys and Officer Jennies, plus countless other examples, seems to support the idea that his dream to become a Pokémon master may actually just be a dream after all. <laughs> Number two, all in Angelica's imagination, Rugrats. I'm just gonna say it, Drew. She's the most beautiful little girl I've ever seen. No question about it, little brother. Speaking of dreams, in this fan theory, it turns out that all those adorable babies on Rugrats were nothing more than projections of a three-year-old's psychological breakdown. We all thought Angelica was just moody because of her age and spoiled upbringing. But here, it's said that her attitude is actually due to the traumatic events of the Rugrats' deaths. Yeah, when it happens to you guys, maybe that's what you should do. It happens to us! Apparently, Chucky died with his mother in a crash, which is why his father is always overly worried about him. Oh, breathe any noxious fumes. Bye, Charles. Oh, drink any radioactive waste. Bye, Charles. And Tommy was stillborn, which is why Uncle Stu is constantly making toys, i.e. for the son he never had. Could be. As for the DeVille twins, they were just a projection of an aborted baby. So Angelica projected them as identical twins since the gender remained unknown. But Philip, you started that fight! No, you started it, Lillian! No, you started it, Philip! If all of that's true, then this little girl is gonna need therapy. Lots and lots of therapy. Maybe she isn't faking it! <laughs> Before our number one pick destroys what's left of your childhood, here are some honorable mentions. Someone left me some money for a perm. <laughs> I'm passing out another flyer to remind you about Parents Tournament yeah. Weekend. Ice cream! So don't be a greedly. The power is yours! Oh, there he is! Kidnap! 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 He's headed for the village! Catch him! Number one. Allegory for the Holocaust, Toy Story 3. What? You want your mommy back? She never loved you. Don't be such a baby! There was no doubt that the third installment of the Toy Story franchise was definitely the darkest. However, we bet that you wouldn't have guessed that the Oscar-winning computer-animated movie also seems to have some unsettling parallels to the Holocaust. Yeah, I know. It looks bad. But guys, you gotta believe me. With that frame of reference, it's scarily easy to see the similarities between the two. What's happening? We're getting thrown out, you idiot! That's what's happening! First off, the toys are forced to leave their home and then find themselves at Sunnyside Daycare, where they are imprisoned and routinely mistreated and injured. Huh, my tail! Where's my tail? <sighs> Near the film's climax, there's a scene that looks like they're all about to perish in an incinerator together. If you replace a few of those key characters and locations with Jews, the Nazis, and concentration camps during World War II, then you have a fan theory that might just be dead on. But if you break our rules, step out of line, try to check out early, well, you're just hurting yourself. Do you agree with our list? Some of these primitive people are small and, and scary. Which fan theory got your head spinning? I got stung right here where I can keep an eye on it. With bewildering top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I will be a Pokemon master. Pokemon master! That is what I'll... Ash, get to bed! 